In order to properly function and survive, living things must express their genes to make protein. Some genes need to constantly express their proteins, but other proteins only need to be made some of the time. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes have different ways of regulating their gene expression. Prokaryotes rely on variations in their environment to regulate their gene expression. For example, if lactose is present in the environment, it will trigger the expression of lactase so the bacteria can break down lactose. If lactose is absent, the gene is not expressed. Eukaryotes also regulate genes in response to their environment. Each cell of a eukaryote only expresses a small number of genes in the nucleus that pertain to its job. Transcription factors are proteins that regulate gene expression by binding to specific sequences that are associated with a transcription initiation site. Transcription factors can be activators or repressors. Along the DNA strand, there are regions of DNA that are called enhancers and regions called silencers. Enhancers are regions of DNA that increase the rate of transcription when an activator binds to them. Silencers are regions of DNA that decrease the rate of transcription when a repressor binds to them. The environment of the cell, and even of the whole organism, can affect gene expression. The Siamese cat is a perfect example. Siamese cats have a mutated allele that codes for the enzyme tyrosinase, the first step in the production of fur pigment, and it's affected by temperature. When the temperature drops, gene expression increases and the pigment in the fur also increases. When the temperature increases, gene expression is reduced and the pigment in the hairs decrease. Nucleosomes also play a role in gene expression. When the tails of the histones are acetylated, the nucleosomes become less tightly packed. In this loosened form, transcription can occur, which is the first part of gene expression. When the tails of the histones are deacetylated, the nucleosomes pack in tighter, stopping gene expression. Additionally, methylated cytosine will tighten the nucleosomes while unmethylated cytosine will loosen them. So, active open chromatin and unmethylated cytosine along with acetylated histones will activate a gene and turn it on. Silent condensed chromatin and methylated cytosine along with deacetylated histones inactivate a gene and turn it off. Genes are the sequences of DNA which transcribe into RNA, typically becoming protein during translation. Genes have three main parts. The promoter, which is the transcription initiation site. The coding sequence, which is transcribed and the terminator is the site where transcription ends. DNA is double-stranded, but only one strand is transcribed for protein synthesis. The coding strand is called the antisense strand, and the non-coding strand is the sense strand. Transcription begins at the promoter on the antisense strand. The RNA forms in the five prime to three prime direction, reading the antisense strand in the three prime to five prime direction. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, unzips DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds, and covalently joins the RNA nucleotides together. Base pairing between DNA and RNA is still between C and G, A and T, but on the mRNA strand, uracil replaces thymine. When messenger RNA is formed in prokaryotes, it's immediately ready for transcription. But in eukaryotes, the mRNA is referred to as pre-mRNA and needs to be modified to become mature mRNA. Sections of the mRNA will be removed and then the mRNA will be spliced back together to make mature mRNA. The sections that are removed are called intervening sequences or introns, and the sections that are kept are called exons. After the introns are removed and the exons are spliced, the mRNA is mature and ready for translation into a protein. Eukaryotes can selectively remove exons of a gene to form different proteins from the same gene. 
This is called alternative splicing. This greatly increases the variety of proteins that can be produced. Strangely, only 1% of DNA actually codes for protein. The rest of the DNA is called non-coding DNA and used to even be called junk DNA in the past. But just because DNA doesn't code for protein doesn't mean it has no purpose. Here are five different uses for non-coding DNA with the acrostic STING to help you remember them. STING stands for satellite DNA, telomeres, introns, non-coding RNA genes, and gene regulatory sequences. Satellite DNA includes tandem repeats, which are the portions used for DNA profiling. Telomeres are repetitive DNA at the ends of chromosomes that protect the chromosomes from deterioration during replication. Introns are non-coding sequences within genes. Non-coding RNA genes can form structural RNA like the tRNA molecules. And gene regulatory sequences include regions of the DNA that are used in the process of transcription, such as promoters, enhancers, and silencers. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.